Welcome, everybody. We are so utterly delighted and honored to have everyone who's, who has come to this town hall, our panelists. Um, we are, everyone's going to introduce themselves, but our panelists and reflecting team and chat monitors, thank you all for coming. I, um, I'm Louisa Putnam and Kermit Cole, and we've been uh, hosting these town halls and we're very um, grateful to be able to have a gathering of peers with the exception uh, um, of Mia is on the reflecting team and she is a trainer and she'll you know, introduce herself. Anyway, so to begin, um, we wanna let everyone know that you can hide, how do you say that? Um. If you can choose uh, on your screen at home uh, to decide whether you see uh, people who have their camera on or not. Um, it's high non-video participants, I think, is the option. Uh, so if you know how to do that, then that will help to make sure that you're seeing the conversation between the people that are uh, at that moment having a dialogue. Uh, we will also be doing things at our end to try to make sure that that works. Uh, but if you do that at home, that will help. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're going to begin by having the panelists introduce themselves and then the reflecting team and then the chat um, moderators, assistants. Um, so. We, we started a little early. We started, oh, we did? Yes, we started a little bit early and there, um, there's, there's 67 people okay. so far. Um, so it's just 10.01 now. Okay. Let's, let's, I think for the sake of people joining, let's start again. Okay. Welcome again. Thank you everyone for coming and joining us for this town hall on peers and open dialogue. Um, we've had one other town hall on peers and it was very powerful and we decided to extend that and inviting Martin um, was originally invited by Rafaela to initiate or gather this town hall. And um, would you like to speak as an introduction, Martin? Yes. Um, maybe the question is fit for the history of this meeting. And I, as a peer support worker and also as an open dialogue practitioner, um, made an a, a emotional journey through learning uh, uh, how open dialogue uh, can be facilitated. And also, the, I was wondering during that journey how peer support could be of a uh, how peer support could be of value within the open dialogue community. So that was not a journey without doubts, and and uh, but I will reflect on that later. But um, in my heart, uh, both movements could be really, really supportive to each other so that's why i thought okay it should be nice to have a meeting and i'm really warm within myself uh, that that we are here together because sometimes i feel very lonely in my in my job in my life and uh, now it is feeling like a, a sort of a global movement and that fills me with uh, joy thank you thank you marion for your uh, uh, chat so it helps me to, um, yeah, to, yeah, to be here. Thank you. We have people attending from about thirty-seven countries, and many people have lived experience, and many mental health workers, and many family members, and um, a few researchers, and a few others, and one person from the moon. So. Um, do we have, should, should we now begin with people introducing? Yes. Yeah. 
So our, our, uh, this beautifully radiant group of people are now going to introduce themselves briefly and then we're going to have the reflecting team step back. You won't be seeing them. The chat monitor stepping back and you won't be seeing them until the very end, uh, the chat monitors, but they are gonna be helping to, to guide and respond and inviting everyone to guide and respond to each other in the chat. And we'll have the, uh, the panel talking for about 20 minutes or so, and then inviting the reflecting team to talk, and then going back to the panel again, and then the reflecting team again, and then all gathering at the end. So thank you again. Hello, I am Hanna de Mäkiölle Tervo. I'm from, from Tornia, from Finland, and I'm a peer specialist in Western Lapland Healthcare District. And I'm very pleased to be here with you all. Hello, I'm Martijn Kohler. I am from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a peer support worker and uh, open dialogue facilitator. I'm really happy to be here. Mm. Thank you, Martin. Hi there, I'm Matthew. Uh, I'm an open dialogue facilitator in the UK. I, I identify as a peer in open dialogue. Um, and yeah, I'm very glad to be here too. Thank you. Hi everybody. My name is Nuala Kenny and I'm uh, in, based in West Cork in Ireland. And I feel very privileged to be part of a open dialogue team in Bantry in West Cork. Um, so I do that one day a week and then I work on a community mental health team as a peer support worker as well one-to-one -one, um, and a group work using my lived experience supporting people. Great to be here. Thank you, Nula. Hey, um, I'm Ray. I have no idea how to introduce myself, except that I am mad, uh, have lived experience, whatever that is. Um, I am both an open dialogue practitioner and I'm also a trainer and part of the Hearing Voices movement as well. And really excited to be here, but also very nervous for some mm. reason. So mm. I'm glad I'm with some allies. Mm. Taking a breath together. Thank you, Ray. Hi, I'm Lila. I am from Israel. I'm a social worker and an open dialogue practitioner. I'm really, really excited uh, to see so many people uh, deeply care about uh, what I care about. Thank you, Lila. Hi, I'm Leon. I'm a peer specialist. Um, I'm a survivor of childhood trauma and I'm from Israel. I'm very, very excited to be here and uh, see how it goes. Mm. Thank you, Leo. Hello, my name is Mia and um, I am a nurse and a psychotherapy and open dialogue trainer from Finland. Um, yes, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Thank mm. you so much. We are too. Thank you, Mia. Yeah, I'm Bruce from Southern California and I'll be helping in the chat. Great to be here. Thank you, Bruce. You look like you've got a flat head. Well, that's, that's the virtual background. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Um, I'm Cindy Peterson Dana. I am from the US, just north of New York City. Um, I'm really very excited to be here today. I'm going to be helping Bruce and Ro and a couple of the chat. Um, just want to really quickly say, this is so touching to my heart. Um, I came into this work 40 years ago as a user survivor. I went into the field, became a therapist. Um, I'm a family member and I just feel like this really is such an important thing to talk about. And um, I, I'm hoping we continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. My name is Ro. Um, I come from Westchester, New York, United States. 
Um, I'm someone with lived experience, a peer specialist. Um, I've experienced social network uh, meetings with my own social network, and I'm currently a co-trainer uh, with Cindy in bringing this work forward in the United States. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Ro. Charmaine is joining us too, but she's going to come on when she when she can. So. Um, Cindy and Ro and Bruce and Charmaine are going to be in the chat. And, um, and you guys could peel off if you want. Thank you so much for doing that. And Mia and Lila and Leon are going to be in the reflecting team. And they're going to now um, um, hide their videos and we'll have just the panel begin. The reflecting team will come back on in a little while. So Mia, we're reluctant to have you leave, but you could, you could if you would. <laughs> Maybe, uh, oh. maybe I should share a little bit about the emotional journey I've made. Is that the idea? Yes. Um, I feel the same emotions as I did when I was trained in open dialogue. And um, being, uh, being part of a movement that had uh, quite a struggle to... Um, bring our voice into the dialogue. I was trained in open dialogue and I was really overwhelmed and, and Matthew knew, <laughs> have experienced <laughs> that overwhelming feeling that I, that I had a lot of emotions, a lot of being part of an open dialogue training was really, really a sort of um, a shock to me, uh, more of a shock that um, and uh, so I was really happy to uh, experience that. But uh, in the same moment or in the same time, I was really confused, getting more confused because when we have open dialogue, why should we have peer support? That was my, 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 my bothering mind. So I, um, I uh, had to find a way in which I could re restructure my mind and uh, try to find uh, a place for peer support within the open dialogue context. So um, now I'm feeling more comfortable uh, about that. Um, so I'm happy to be here to uh, have a dialogue about, uh, about that. Yeah. Well, wow. perhaps I'll jump in there. Just <clears throat> as you mentioned our training, Martin, and I was just struck by by an extraordinary feeling when you said that your overwhelming experience. And uh, yeah, and I, I yeah, I remember some tender moments on that training, and 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 your overwhelming joy at times. <laughs> um, yeah, members of our team still still mention you, Martin, often. Um, yeah, and and I guess that that that's one of the things about open dialogue, which which I found so radical in a way is, and and Sekula mentioned something one of the first town hall meetings and about being human, um, and and coming to realize how useful it is to be human. Um, and you know, and in his writings, the acknowledgement that, that dialogue is is a basic sort of human human experience, and um, yeah, without getting caught up in thinking about it too much, just the feeling of that. You know, I've sort of reflected on 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 open dialogue quite a lot for the last couple of weeks, in I guess in preparation for this, and yeah, and one of the things that really struck me is that that when I sort of walk away from what I think to have been good or effective therapy, it's, it's, um, it's a feeling in my heart 
more than anything else, just just that I've been touched, I've been moved and um, by the people there and changed somehow. And uh, I was reminded of that feeling just then, Martin, when, when when you spoke of our training. You know, that's 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 the same experience of that heartfelt experience of being touched and and changed. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for reminding me of that, and and, and thank you for talking about your your journey to well to this conversation and um you know i guess we all have very different routes in and 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 i've never trained as a peer support worker and um i think perhaps that's what's really valuable is there is so much difference amongst us as well you know uh i guess i didn't identify as having lived experience um and and i've and i've used that in in network meetings and um yeah, it's been an interesting journey for me. I, I trained as a therapist, a counsellor, so thought of myself as a bit of a professional and only really thought about myself as a peer much later on. Um, you know, it just, I mean, it's one of the reasons I found myself becoming a, a therapist, I guess, is because I had lived experience. So obviously it informed that, you know. I know that that kind of suffering exists in the world and it, it made sense to attend to that somehow in myself and, and others. But um but I didn't think about the sort of the possibility of, of self-disclosure really of, of yeah. And, and the use of that. And, and I'll leave it there. I think as an open question about self-disclosure um, cause yeah, I've, I've probably said enough, but um, yeah. Thank you again for that feeling, Martin. I love that you guys have talked about the different routes in um, to this. It's something when I hear the words peer support and open dialogue, I often feel this slight ish feeling. Um, and I think that relates to my, my route in was initially as an activist and then part of the Hearing Voices Network uh, and a project manager. I created peer support projects where, which gathered people together to speak about um, experiences that aren't shared in, in polite society. And it had a very social um, justice element to it. It's the stories that just don't get heard. And it's very close to my own heart as someone that hears voices and has mad experiences for want of a better word. And then I, when I heard about open dialogue, I was really excited. I think for what you guys described the humanity, I was like, this is what I would have wanted. Um, but also fearful of the professionaliz professionalization because it came from an amazing group of professionals listening to people <laughs> working with families and um, people in distress, but it, it was top down in a way. And I was like, how will this be translated to England where we have a lot of top down? Um, I, I'm torn about my role. My role is as a practitioner, but I use my lived experience lens all of the time. And I think the, as well as connecting with people that are in distress and the families in distress in the meeting, I think the biggest use has been within the teams helping to show that we can use our experiences and that disclosure um, and how we can do it, because it is skillful. Those of us that do this in our work, we are skilled. Um, and now I'm excited that I use it as a trainer. So I'm often switching hats, but my lived experience is the biggest hat. It's always there. And I can't just take it off and I wouldn't want to. I don't know how the others kind of relate to these ideas or not. I wish we had actual hats. I mean, when you said your biggest hat, I was envisioning what that looked like. Is it like a sombrero or is it like a wizard's hat? Or, you know, form it should have said it's my roots, it's my tree. This is the, the whole of me. Um, and then the rest of it is maybe the, the leaves. It, it's changed me a bit, this open dialogue world, world but the lived experience is the core. Sorry. 
Hanala. Thank you. There's so much to relate, as you said, Ray. And I started, I, I tried to start somewhere. Mm. My lived experience is based on support and care in this local mental health care system, which is run as open dialogue system here in Tornia, here in Western Lapland. Mm. I've got support and care, life crisis. Mm. My and my, for me and my family, we have experienced. And mm. my motivation to peer work has been the, that I could share the good I have felt in this open dialogue system to offer, offer it to others too. And I see the a difference if I think it's Western Lapland and Finland largely. I see differences there in, in peer work. There are so many who want to make difference just to make, um, to get more human mental health care services. But I have thought and uh, I know that some others also here in Western Lapland, um, I think it, it's because of the open dialogue that we have got human services. We have felt equality and we want to share those. We want to make so big difference. <laughs> of, course, of course, there is always something to develop. It's an other kind of approach to this peer work. Mm. Well, thanks for that. Um, yeah, for me, the, the real beauty about peer support, I suppose, is we can be with people in distress without a hat on. Um, and whether that be a professional peer hat or a professional nurse's hat or a professional social worker or OT, we're all professionals with our role if we're working professionally, um, in my view. And I just think the fact that we can sit with people in distress and find out their stories and and listen to them, deep, li deeply listen to them in a way that doesn't need the professional hat. Um, and I, I think the, the the other beauty of open dialogue is that um, we're all humans in the room, and I think psychiatry sometimes can can um, complicate distress, whereas in open dialogue we're just sitting there as humans, finding out someone's story, trying to help them make sense of it and understand it, and um, and I think I think whether we're peer workers or other professionals I think um, it's just that being with people that, that deep listening and being as you talked about that Nuala uh, Nula Nula I'm going to mispronounce names and I'm really sorry. Um, it reminded me of, of the roles that we hold when we go into a room and the power that we hold if we're coming in as part of an open dialogue team, whether we are professional or peer support or, or whatever label we have. And I know it was a question asked when we did our, our dry run, like how do you introduce yourselves to to the network, to the person, to the family, do you say, hi, my name is Ray, I'm a peer support worker. How do you guys think about that? Um, or does it just evolve over time? I introduce myself just by my name and that I'm an open dialogue facilitator, but 
when I reflect, when I'm doing part of the reflecting team moment, I will be open and not in a special way, but open about how uh, how it resonates within myself. And um, I try to be very uh, modest, um, modest. Um, and sometimes I do, uh, I try to, um, in a modest way, I try to uh, reflect on 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 on, on uh, how my position was as a user in relation to a family and or in relation to professionals. Uh, so I reflect on how I experienced the position and the, uh, what I experience is that I have a tendency to be very sensitive to the voices that are not heard. <laughs> it is like that my body is a sort of, um, how do you call it, a sort of an antenna that is, uh, or a sort of, um, yeah, my body resonates and also starts to uh, present itself when when I feel I get the feeling that that voices are not heard so uh, and then I try to listen to that and I try to be in a modest way trying to raise the question if all voices are heard I know in Bantry, we tend to usually come in with, with our names. I know some people may introduce themselves with their professional hat, but I think there's been a slight more veering towards just using our names. And then, like Martin, if in reflection or if something comes up for us, um, resonates for us, we may come in then with, um, me especially anyway, come in with... Um, my own experience and, and the resonance with that. Um, and, I, and I do think there's a shift now to other people um, with other hats wanting to come in. There's definitely been conversations about that outside maybe of, of a network meeting, but them wanting to maybe come in with their lived experience. I think there's a shift across um, the services um, and an openness for people. But I guess with peer work, there's a a not so I wouldn't use the word pressure but there's definitely a an encouragement for us that it's all about us using our lived experience whereas other people um with different hats they're not they've never been encouraged to do that but I think there's a little bit of a shift with that which would be amazing that everybody because I, I sometimes feel um that maybe in the room that um or I'm sometimes conscious of it that maybe the other people with other hats on maybe might feel a little bit um i suppose out of place or whatever if it's just me using the lived experience so it would be fantastic because we all do have lived experience it's just not everybody's willing to maybe share it or comfortable with it or because of their profession they're not encouraged to um but yeah definitely we would try and just use our names and sometimes if there is a scenario that in a, in a network meeting where a particular hat is needed then I may come in as a peer or someone might come in as a nurse or a social worker or a psychologist or whatever it is but it's nice to just be there as humans first first and foremost yes I introduce, introduce myself with name and that I'm peer specialist, but that's, that's a very interesting question that who needs these titles? Do we need, do, do the system need, does the system need, the client, does the client needs those titles? And what do we read with those? Uh, are we talking about our lived experiences or 
are we talking about how we feel in that situation? That kind of things comes to my mind now. Thank you, Hanale. Yeah, who are they for? Um, perhaps sometimes for me to feel more credible. I mean, in, in a sense, it, it doesn't help being in the sort of systems that, that we are. And when we work in the NHS, I, I might come from our locality and, and where we all have key cards. Um, you know, and if I'm seeing somebody there as a psychotherapist, you know, I need to let them through a couple of doors. You know, the, the power is clearly held in that strange key card. I'm, I'm very keen to take it off my neck and, and cast it aside as soon as I sit down with a person so that I'm not identified with it. But, you know, we're sort of encouraged into roles in, in, in the system somehow. And, and certainly when, when we were seeing people in, in, in this peer-supported open dialogue way, you know, we weren't exactly sure. Um, and, and I think the people we, the networks we were working with, you know, are looking for assurance too. Um, you know, and I, Open Dialogue was not very well known. I guess in some ways we found ourselves being a little bit apologetic about that. <laughs> um, you know, and, and wanting to offer something, you know. So we might, you know, I might introduce myself as a counsellor and but an open dialogue facilitator and and somebody with lived experience. Um, yeah, um, but but yeah, the, the, the sort of the need for labels and, and the difficulty around power is, is 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 a really big subject, I think. Would this be a good time to... Oh, go ahead, Ray. Go ahead. Just um, a few thoughts, because I asked the question and it's been so lovely to hear some of the different ways that you guys relate to this. Um, one of the things that was striking me was, I think, what Martin said about the, uh, the antennae. I think this is a core cool part of my, what I think I bring um, to open dialogue is the feeling, I think. I agree that everyone has lived experience, but there's bits of lived experience that I have that my colleagues often don't have, including coercion and being silenced and various mad experiences. And I feel it. And, and then finding words for it is really hard. I think the other thing was around the labels and who are they for? Because I've never been a peer support worker ever. I've facilitated peer support groups, I've run peer support projects, and I've always used lived experience, but I've never had that role title. And I remember in my team, um, when I was working uh, with an open dialogue team in the NHS, my role was trainee therapist, um, because I was doing the three year course. But one of my colleagues after a network meeting wrote the notes on the system and I read them and they had me as peer support worker. And it just punched me in the stomach, not because it's an insult, because actually peer support work is very skilled and amazing. And I champion it, but it was the idea that lived experience can sometimes, it's like, it felt like calling me a service user that they assume because I am a service user at times, that means it must be peer support that I offer, like needless of that pressure <laughs> perhaps to be the one that gives the lived experience. But then I always use my lived experience anyway, so I don't know why I was frustrated and hurt. Um, but it felt, I think you mentioned Matthew Power. I think I think it was around the power. Sorry, Louise, I know you wanted to come in there. No, I was just wondering if this would be a good time to invite the reflecting team. Would that be all right? Anybody have anything they want to say before then? Perhaps just very quickly, just the, the mention of the antenna and and <laughs> and, and and yeah, I, I wrote that down myself. You know, voices not being heard or not being understood. You know, because it's difficult. You know, and I think people are 
naturally scared of things they don't understand and some symptoms they don't understand. And I'm not saying I know or, or you know, I have experience of all extreme experience. I, I just don't. But 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 I, I have experience of sort of psychosis or derealization or whatever words one might, might want to use. And, you know, it, it does allow for a sort of a slightly special understanding of that same experience in the other, you know, and it's less foreign to me, that that ground, you know. So I'm I'm more inclined to ask questions and, and more inclined to notice when those questions aren't being asked, you know, when people are quick to move away from, you know, what, what are those voices saying or, or you know. And, and, and I love that about open dialogue, that it, that it moves towards. It doesn't, it doesn't seek to contain or reduce somebody. It, 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 it aims to, to uncover and understand. And, and, you know, as Yako says, you know, give words to the experience. And, and then something you said, Ray, in one of the early town hall meetings, which, which was, you know, it's an amazing moment when it stops being an individual problem. You know, and I just find that so touching, the, 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 the idea that somebody can be reached, you know, in, in, in that difficulty. And I've, I've experienced difficult things and the idea of somebody understanding that, it's, it's a lifeline, isn't it? So, yeah, I just very quickly wanted to chip in there about the antenna. You know, I, I have that same sort of sensitivity about those sorts of what we might describe as extreme experiences, although I sort of don't like that term somehow. But anyway, <laughs> just experiences. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to add some few words because it is starting to flow in myself. It is, my body is all, <laughs> my body is presenting itself. <laughs> yeah. um, it is uh, also, in my opinion, that the body um, keeps the score. Um, of course, that is. Uh, um, the title of the book, uh, Trauma. Um, but I think it is really so that the body has a profound way in which it uh, stores all kinds of stories. Yeah. And, um, and why I was so happy, but also so sad, and that my body during the open dialogue course was that my body and my mind were opening up like it tore open it 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 was like all protection was removed all containment was removed and i opened up and all the it screamed in my body it wanted to be known all the uh, stories that is, are are hidden in my body and that is uh, some extra words for mm. an experience that is not to be able to be put in words. Thank you. Now, for those that aren't familiar with open dialogue in this town hall, we're now going to switch to, to um, Leon and Lila and Mia reflecting on what they've heard and how it has moved them. And we'll move away from the panel for a time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, but uh, it says here that uh, I can't start my video, but do you hear my voice? No, Kermit's, Kermit's um, correcting that. Okay, thank you. Okay. How are you, Leon and Lila? I'm listening to this. It's uh, very powerful. Uh, 
I stayed with what Martin says uh, in the end about the, the body uh, and the memories that it raises. And when I listened uh, to the talk, I felt it was like uh, opening a water tap. You know, it started very slowly, but then it's all streamed so much about this issue, want, uh, want to be told. And it's left me with uh, some sadness about uh, the lack of space in the world. We have uh, for our story, but also happy about creating this space now. I'm thinking about, I, first I feel my body, my heart is boom, like a, like a bomb. And um, I have a song that I heard today in my, in my head that came back to me after I heard the, the, what, what was said about the body. It's a, words are very unnecessary. They can only do harm. Uh, so I, I heard it. I thinking about the time that the words are can't can't hold the the feeling that I I was I was feeling when I was in crisis or in, in a bad time. And I remember the the feeling that I I, I was feeling in my body in the in the dialogue, uh, in the open dialogue course, it was the first in Israel and, and we, was, we were very exciting. And I think what, what, what was the most powerful for me was the, that I felt very relaxed and without judgmental like I used to feel. So, I, I remember this time, this feeling, because it felt very nice. Yes, when you talk, I'm, I'm staying with sadness as well. I'm, I'm curious about that and about what you described, but about fe having this feeling in your body. But then also what I was thinking a lot when I was listening to the panel was that when we are talking about open dialogue, what are we talking about? Uh, the word open dialogue community was used as well. And I'm curious that what is that? What is the community? Because also different people globally who do the training are working in the systems are working in organizations. And these organizations, what are the voices that are invited in, welcomed in? And then I start to think about the power and, and, uh, and then there's so many things that I don't know what to say about. But maybe there is sometimes this feeling of sadness inside of me as well, uh, when I think about the power and the voices that are not heard. And I'm thinking about the language. I'm thinking about othering. That was word that came to me. I think that the, the voices from lived experience, um, defined lived experience in organization I think they are changing the language that is used in the organizations and, and um, treatment processes, if we want to use the, this language. But, um, but yes, these are some threads of some thoughts that I, I had uh, when listening to them and, and to you. 
I, I struggle a lot with the, the definition of lived experience because mm. I start I start the lived experience department in in Enosh, the organization that I work in and they ask me you you know you you are leading the, the lived experience tell us what is lived experience what who is in this category and it was very actually there is no right answer or one answer i i still i still struggle with this I heard you, Mia, <clears throat> when you said about hierarchy and uh, uh, Ray uh, and Noella, they used the metaphor of hat and uh, Matthew brought the key holders as these symbols and this question like, uh, take this hat on uh, can I like when I take the key holder and I sit with a person is it there because it's not on my neck and and what Ray says about uh, how she was defined uh, by her by her team, as a peer support, it's, it's made me ask myself, like, uh, can I be free from uh, the life experience if I don't want to hold this position? Because in open dialogue, we can listen to, the, we need to listen to all the voices. And if what I hear now is not from, the perspective of life experience. Does it have a place or do I dare to, to serve a perspective, something that is not really me at the moment? Hmm. Hmm. You... Yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Oh, oh, go ahead, B. No, I was just wondering that if we go back to the panel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your words and your feelings. So now we're going to, the panel will come back and the reflecting team will move away. And we'll have, the reflecting team will come on again. Mia, could you turn off your camera? Thank you. Thank you. I almost, I turned my microphone on and then off and then on again. And why did I do that? Partly what I was going to say felt very superficial. Um, it was how weird it was that we've all come back into different seats <laughs> on my screen. We're in different places and it feels a little like, whoa. Um, but I think also I was so enjoying listening to uh, Leo and Leela and Mia talk. Um, so many thoughts were going through my head and I'm not sure which of them to bring. And I'm trusting that you guys might bring <laughs> other ones that are within me. I think, ooh, go for the less political one because there's some political power stuff in my head and heart, but it's the last bit that's caught me for the moment. Um, what is it that we are offering with our lived experience? I think sometimes um, in my what I've noticed at least can be that we can be expected to, that the lived experience is the voice of which we speak, you know, not just the embodied antennae that um, Martine and, 
has spoken about, but our actual experiences, and that's what we'll bring to the reflections, and that's what will come. And often it does with me. It's part of my way of being, but I really believe lived experience, expertise, peer support, whatever words we put on it, it's incredibly skillful ways of just being with another human being. And it overlaps like a Venn diagram for me with open dialogue, but it differs as well. Um, so I, I don't know quite where I'm going with this, but I think sometimes we can, we can just reduce it to the stories and the experiences that we share when it feels so much more than that. In terms of the power, the bit that I've struggled with in the, uh, I think Mia asked about the open dialogue community. I guess it's the, for me, the people that originated. So from Western Lapland and those in the UK who have some power over how it's implemented, that lived experience training, you know, the years that we've put in doing this stuff is not seen yet at an equal level as professional experience. And I really want that to change because I think it's equal but different. And um, I'm really glad that I get to now train as an equal and create the courses as an equal, but that's because we went outside of the structures that exist and formed a cooperative with um, Isolk from West Cork, <laughs> who was my co a fellow trainee on the three year course with Nick Putman. But we had to create something a bit radical and outside because there's not, there's not the structures there at the moment. All the opportunities. Yeah, be quiet. I see noddings, but there may be some differences as well, which is okay. Yeah, I guess I guess I in some ways I don't feel like I've got a lot to say in the sense of um when I'm when I'm working in in the open dialogue team in Bantry, I don't feel any different to the rest of the team. I feel like my lived experience, to be honest, is I've got a lot of it, and uh, and from family members and friends, and and so I don't feel any different to to be honest to someone working in psychiatry even, and that might sound like very um, because I really do feel that the sitting with people is where it's at, and. I don't need to have a degree to do that. And um, I've got lots of educational experience in, in things and some of it in, in peer support. Um, so I don't, it doesn't kind of bring up anything for me. This thing of the difference between, or the difficulty sometimes that people do experience um, being a peer working in open dialogue, because I actually don't feel any different to the rest of my team members. Um, in the sense that we all sit with people. I'm very lucky to be working on a team that we all sit, we can all sit with people. There's about eight of us at the moment and we all sit as equally as present and we all listen as deeply, whether I've got lived experience or they have or they don't. Um, so I suppose it's not bringing up anything for me, um, but, um, but I do, I am aware that lots of people have, are having issues around the world in, in peers working in teams, not just open dialogue teams. Here in Ireland, there's quite a lot of people having difficulty as peers working in, in other teams because, you know, there's many reasons I won't go into them now that do need to be looked at. But um, I guess I feel lucky that, that I have such, maybe it's because I have so much lived experience, I don't know, um, or, um, and many types of it and, and have been, I suppose, a magnet for people with lived experience, I suppose, always everywhere I go. And so I've been surrounded by it all my life. So it's it's kind of, I feel like I've learned a lot from being with people. And so I use that. You, Ray and Noala, what talking about uh, structures and being part of team and it's interesting here in Western Lapland that um, we feel equality and 
when we are in some peer task there with professionals um, we are appreciated and we are listened and we get good pat good feedback but we are not essential part of teams there are no posts in our organization where we could where we could be hired and also in the whole Finland there are only few peers who are vocational or fixed part of teams um, our organization is missing structures for peer work. We are we are searching all the time those. We are creating creating those together with, with professionals, but it takes quite a long time. Those discussions have been maybe 20 years here in Finland of clients agency and clients involvement in healthcare system. But those are still more visible in talks than in activities in organizations. And we have a very kind of activities that we are here in our organization. But I think those structures are missing. We are growing our roots to organization. I'm wondering, Hanele, how you feel about that the structures are not there, or um, maybe you, you can answer first, and then I will reflect a bit more. Yeah, some, sometimes it's um, causing uncertainty and frustration. But um, maybe I have learned, and maybe also others here have learned that, or accepted that it takes time. And it helps that we are not alone. We are searching that these structures together with professionals. There are workers who are in charge of peer work. And we, together we are trying to create a space for this discussion and new ideas, how how peers could involved more. Mm. But yes, there are many kinds of feelings of that. But but for me personally, the feeling of equality in those situations where I am is very important, and um, it helps and. Um, Give us, um, give us. Um, no, I can't find any good word for that. But <laughs> give us power, or something like that. Mm. Does this resonate, you, Martin? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, my dear Hanella. <laughs> uh, that are words out of my heart. And it resonates in the journey uh, we have to, we had to make uh, to find a position and to find space and equal uh, e equality uh, and reciprocity. And I was struck by um, uh, the words of um, Mia about community. And I felt, I think I, I used the word. So when Mia talks about, oh, community, I think, oh, maybe I have said something wrong. <laughs> so I hope, Mia, you will forgive me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. um, community, yes. How about the voices in your own organization? Uh, do we do I allow them to uh, to be heard? And um, I want to be honest. 
try to be honest that sometimes it's hard for me to hear those voices because I am afraid sometimes that um, the precious space we 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 have the precious little space we now have like our peer support community and that is really a community <laughs> will be overtaken by the system and uh, I'm sorry that I I, I sometimes I, I I'm saying sorry to all the professional colleagues of mine here that I sometimes am afraid and exclude you or um, I'm sometimes distrust the system or my colleagues. And it has to do with my experiences. Um, and I'm almost getting sad now. Um, I'm always crying. Um, because I think that that are experiences that are uh, that were life threatening, that were that were that 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 I had no space the space was away, my life was so marginalized. And um, it is sometimes um, difficult to uh, share that space with all the voices. So I want to excuse myself to the people I've been, uh, how can you say? a bit rude or a bit um, judgmental, but it is out of an um, out of an force that that tries to keep the space open for people who are marginalized. I hope it's Okay, I feel massively moved to come in now. And I realize, Matthew, you've not had any space yet. So I'll try and be as brief as I can. But what you said really, <laughs> Martin, um, why was it? Oh, I think it hits to the core in a way of what it is I feel that I, we, I don't know, can offer. The fact that I can feel so viscerally angry at times and obviously it's my role to try and use that in a way that is open spaces and I do my best but it's so useful. Um, I remember so my team when I worked in Kent are amazing. I had a very strong powerful voice in the team. I wasn't squished and yeah the equality felt very much there. But there were times when people didn't realize they were influenced by their training. By we're working against societal assumptions that those of us with a history of mental whatever's, madness, distress, are less credible. They didn't always see when that was being played out in the room, um, when certain words were used, when certain power things were happening. And I'd have very strong responses and try really hard to use it in a useful way. And it was a credit that people sometimes could meet me, sometimes couldn't. But I don't want to apologize for that. Really don't. It's a voice that is important. Um, so I love that you named it. But I also part of me is like, obviously, you can apologize for whatever, but I want to value some of that too. Yeah, thank you, Ray, for thinking of me. And my, my curse has been hovering over the mute, mute button several times in the last 15 minutes. But, but the offer hasn't, the, the moment didn't present itself. Gosh, there's just, yeah, there's so much there, isn't there? We really could talk all day. It's, you know, I, mean, I was thinking about my team too, after something Nuller had said and and, and Hanela and, and Martin and yourself, you know, this this notion of sort of parity and, and, and obviously there are systemic problems, you know, and parity of pay being a problem with, with peer support workers in the UK, for example, let, let alone let alone sort of clinical credibility. Uh, but, but my own personal experience, I guess, in 
in a team like you raised is not to have been squished, but but to have had an equally powerful voice. Um, you know, and I guess I was thinking about how it, how it felt vulnerable for me sometimes sharing very openly, self-disclosing very openly, you know, because, you know, I guess I, I don't day to day and some of those experiences are strange, you know, and, but they're, they're important in the moment, you know, to, to sort of connect with, with, with people in, in that meeting. It, it, it feels, it feels important to share those things, but, you know, I guess I was, when we were, when you were all talking earlier, I, I was thinking about my team and I was thinking about the great amount of trust and care that existed there and, and, and that I felt very held by, by that team, you know, and, and, and the sort of closeness of the team, you know, intervision, the sort of spending time together is, is such, such a crucial, crucial part of the whole process. And I guess I was feeling gratitude for that team, you know, and so it was a, I was thinking about, you know, a sort of shout out to the people with, without lived experience, you know, <laughs> like Nuno was saying, you know, all those generous, generous spirited colleagues of ours who are prepared to try to see things a little differently to what the s system often suggests. And, and obviously when we're talking, debating about these things, it's difficult not to be a, sound a little binary sometimes, lived experience, not lived experience. But, but um, I loved what, what Leon was saying in, in the reflection, you know, she struggles with the definition and, and I guess we should struggle with the definition. You know, I don't have lived experience of systemic racism. I don't have lived experience of coercion in the mental health system. I, I don't have lived experience of a compulsory drug order. Um, I do have experience of, of some, some extreme states, but, you know, and, and, and all of our colleagues have lived experience of being a person experiencing loss, you know, and, and, and connection and, you know, and, and everyone in the team's making a commitment toward that sort of humanity of, of all sharing their lived experience. And yeah, so I guess I just wanted to fill in that end of the spectrum a little bit and, and shout out to my team and their generous spirits. How would this moment be to go back to the reflecting team? Do, is there, does that feel okay? Okay, great, can you, reflecting team? Yeah, actually just if you all turn off your video and reflecting team turn on their video. Thank you. I feel very emotional in this point. The word family came to my, my head. I think I feel more in a family, in, in a community of, dialogue, of, of open dialogue than I was felt in my family. So it's very hard very powerful for me now. When I heard the uh, Hanale and Martin uh, talk um, about uh, the need to have a certainty that you belong, that the team is your team, And I thought about like how, in a way for me, the most uh, basic pain about uh, being uh, forced to be hospitalized is uh, not to be belong uh, to my place, but also in a way to the humankind, you know, that my experience is so uh, something that cannot have a place that I need to be out. And I had also Martin speaking about the generous uh, feeling of uh, 
sitting with people who don't have maybe this kind of life experience, uh, but to feel uh, that you really care uh, and they want as much as you to, to feel that you can be, you can belong again. And in a way, today in uh, our open dialogue family, somebody says that being dialogical is like a virus that you can spread around. And I really feel this now in listening to all this panel. And maybe there, now when I listen to you is some response to this question that I have, which isn't new, even I was uh, referring to this question, to this conversation, of course, since we are here today, but about the open dialogue community, uh, because it is a genuine question for myself all the time that, that who are we if there is we? But that's, that's something that I have been occupied um, with. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm lacking words now a lot. And I'm still feeling very moved. As I have been since this conversation started. Uh, I think we are talking in so many ways, as, as Ray said, there are many political voices in many ways, but uh, also these issues are just so crucial for, for the human connection, that how are we connected with each other? And how do we continue the conversation? And how do we continue the dialogue? That's what I was thinking when there was, uh, when Martin and Ray were talking about the, uh, and Han Hanele as well. And of course, since I work with her, we know that there are sometimes situations when it feels that how can we go on in this conversation? And yet, that's exactly what needs to be done. That's very, I mean, I think, that is exactly what we are talking about here. We have this conversation now, and how do we continue it? Do we need to, because we've only got 15 minutes. It, yes, it, I think we'll go back now to the panel. Thank you. Mia, will you take off your video? Thank you. How can we go on? I want to thank the reflecting team for their reflections. I have no many words left, so one word that that uh, stuck to me was belonging. And um, many people I meet uh, in my life, in my work, within groups within network meetings are longing to belong. So um, as do I. Um, maybe uh, we need to learn to live with the fear not to belong. But um, to have moments to feel <laughs> you belong to a group that uh, 
has a lifelong <laughs> lifelong search to belong to a group and um, yes no I I want to thank you for uh, a bit of that feeling. Yeah, I suppose I want to acknowledge the the sad feeling that um, Hannah Lay and Mia and mainly mentioned and maybe a little bit uh, Leela as well and, and Marchin. Um, and I suppose I'm a little bit curious about or maybe wondering about um, where I suppose it's what's behind it on a deeper level maybe I didn't quite get maybe fully understand um but um but I could def I could really feel it I could feel it in the room in on the on, not in the room but on in the zoom um and um yeah just yeah and just the whole I suppose mention of of I was struck by um, Mia's mention that her oh no it was um was it who was it that mentioned about the connection between um there was more of a family feel in with the open dialogue family than her own family i think was it was it Dila that mentioned that and um, that was quite striking I suppose one of the things I suppose is that I suppose does that sense of belonging on a team, whether it be open dialogue, I suppose the question I have for myself is, or that I have had for, for quite a time in, in different places in my life, is, is do I find that internally, that sense of belonging? I know you can get it externally, but I, I think for me, I suppose I've come to a place of understanding it to be something that I feel internally, that sense of belonging on my open dialogue team where I feel a sense of, yes, I can bring my lived experience and I can bring it bloody well, pretty well, bloody good. And um, and I suppose I've, I've not always had that, but I've, I've, I suppose I've nurtured it and I'll continue to nurture it and, and, and make it stronger, I guess, all the time when I've got the energy to do it. And yeah, thank you, Nurhan. I'd like to, like Martin did, th thank the reflecting team. That was extremely moving. And yeah, and I'd like to talk to that too. That that idea that Leon and Lila were both both talking about that notion of family, and, and Leon used the word love, and Lila that that idea that you, we can belong again. And uh, yeah. One of the team I was working with favorite paper was one by Sekula and Trimble from 2005, Dialogue as the Embodiment of Love, I think was the sort of subtitle of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it is that sort of sense of belonging, I think, like Nula was saying, in the team. But, but you know, I think in the paper, it talks about loneliness, you know, and, and, and I guess I, I, I remember that for myself, like, like, Martin says, you know, that that profound sense of loneliness, you know, that, that we can experience in extreme states. And, um, and, and perhaps everybody in a network who, who's, who's feeling confused and, 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 and upset by the place they're in. And, you know, I, do I have to apologize for being a bit soppy? I, I don't think I do, you know. <laughs> you know, in, embodied dialogue, that sort of that reaching out to each other's humanity, you know, responding to each other in that way, um, you know, is, 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 a, is, is love, you know, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. And, you know, Martin was talking about his experience in the training right at the beginning. And I was reminded of that, you know, that, you know, the two of us stood there, sort of tears flowing, you know, and, 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 you know, that feeling existed there in training. It exists, existed in my team in intervision and it existed in our work together. 
and 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 it existed in you know in those network meetings and and it's extraordinary i guess you don't find that everywhere and that, that's that's one of the things that that i found in open dialogue which which is remarkable and, and like people have said sort of goes beyond words but sometimes it's worth putting words to emotions i think It's funny as you spoke, Matthew, I love that you were soppy. Soppy is brilliant. Um, but the love makes me go, Phew. it's really strange the impact that has on my body. And I, I was thinking why, and obviously there's the relational trauma, blah, 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 in my history. Um, but I think it's that my experience of, of the course I was on was that I made amazing connections with people and felt very much part of this whatever this is but i felt huge amounts of otherness at other times times of separation and disconnection and they were more painful because i was coming into this open dialogue training and we were connecting as humans but even then there was a difference um and i'm curious about that and i saw in the chat a few people asking um how can we have these conversations with people who do not have the, the hats, the tree of lived experience? Because I need them to be in this conversation because I'm not sure that those that are in the decision-making places really know what it is that we bring. I think our teams do and that, but I know, yeah, this is the thing. I, th I think so many people get it, kind of, but some people don't. Final bit, I can see that my time is going. Um, uh, when I was asked to come into this, I had this image of being in the middle of a fight cage with the people looking around me. I was incredibly worried about today. And I think it's because there's things I want to speak that are very hard to hear. And I need to be in the dialogue with the other so that we can talk together. And I would love talking with you guys and listening, but I want the next one to be, to, yeah, to not have that fight cage. Not that we're fighting, but maybe mm -hmm. that's the image. Mm -hmm. Well, per perhaps following in that spirit, <laughs> uh, as such, uh, let's invite everybody. Uh, we can't invite everybody in the chat room. I wish you uh, could. We wish we, but in the spirit of having as many people as possible on screen. Let's have everybody that's connected, that's listed as a panelist. And that could include uh, Rafaela and Shana and um, uh, uh, everybody, uh, and Charmaine and Bruce and Cindy and Ro. Is Charmaine on? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just for an opportunity to, well, perhaps say something meaningful, but even more meaningful than that, just get a chance to look at each other and savor the space of dialogue. I'm also wondering that before, do you, Hanele, want to say something to the last reflection since you were on the panel? Mm -hmm. Can you me if this is okay, like this, but maybe I can start this conclusion around this has been very great honor to be here in this panel with you all there's so much thoughts and feelings with those i can continue my journey in this open dialogue spirits thank you so much Shana is, Shana is now a panelist and can join us. Uh, Shana is the um, uh, executive director of 
of Open Excellence, also known as the Foundation for Excellence in Mental Health Care, one of the sponsors of this of this gathering, uh, along with uh, Hope and Dialogue, uh, represented by Rafaela. Uh, so we want to thank well, them. I'm not certain if my microphone is working this time. Can you tell me? Oh, good. I'm just very happy to be here. I think it was um, a wonderful, well, genuine conversation that um, was really heartfelt, which I think is one of the beautiful things about this way of um, being together. I really think that for me, the first um, similar meetings, network meetings that I was present in, it took a long time to feel, to understand what was going on. And I feel like this was a wonderful way of communicating that I hope that it was. I hope that those who joined, um, who hadn't had similar experiences before, um, understood more the model, but also um, had the one had the feelings that are created so um, so nicely and so gently by this group. Yeah, it's a very you. gentle group, which I appreciate so much. And thank you for sharing your sentiments and your thoughts and, and um, your experience. And Bruce, would you like to uh, join us uh, if you turn on your camera? Just welcoming last words or and could I share? A couple last words. Please, please. I'm, I'm responding, I guess. I feel very moved um, by the panel. And I am wondering how to bring more voices to the table um, to raise point about people in leadership positions and either having more leaders have disclosed peer and lived experience and also more dialogues like this that really include everybody that would be part of dialogic practice. Um, so thank you. Rafaela, well, I wonder if you could speak to that at all in relation to your. Yeah, uh, yeah thank you. I feel or I, I'm also very moved by this conversation. I think it's very meaningful for, especially the part, uh, the reflection about uh, our community, which is in development, which is growing, and uh, the idea of a we, who we are, and uh, how can we uh, really include the voices that are less powerful in the system. So um, for me, I think this is, was really a beautiful uh, conversation that you have, and thank you for, for your sharing. I was looking today, before coming here, uh, with my colleague, um, there, some preliminary results of our survey that show that uh, open that, that there are existing 138 open dialogue teams in the world, and 52 of them have a peer support component. So it's about the 38 percent. So there is a lot of work to be done to have more peers and uh, include their voices in open dialogue team. And I think this conversation is a good starting point for doing this. So thank you, everybody. I just have one thought, wondering and uh, following on Cindy's point, as I, I wonder whether one of the lessons to take from all of this is to remember that whatever a person happens to be saying or not saying about themselves, that we know we can remember that everybody has their own lived experience that they may or may not have found words for yet. And that our work is to try to create the space in which those words may be found or may not need to be found. That's my thought. I just have one last thought, Kermit, which is when I have found when leadership shares lived experience, it helps create that safe space for many others 
to share. And, and we in our training can help create the safe space in which they may feel moved and safe to do that. Ro, we have, I'd uh, love to hear your voice if you have. Yes, I, I just am really moved to be here again, <laughs> but with a global community and to connect to the global community. Um, I do think there's a lot more work to be done um, speaking as someone as an identified peer, um, but definitely someone with lived experience. Um, so I'm really just encouraged to hopefully expand and move forward with this dynamic and to make it a strong and mutual experience. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, Anything else on anybody's heart they wish that they had been able to say before we close? Lovely to be with you all. Just a tiny one, Louisa, and that's, mm. I know we've only had a few of us in the room who are doing this as people with lived experience or peers, but I know there's a lot of people in the chat who've been doing this for a long time too. And as people who are not here who have paved the way. So I just want to mm -hmm. shout out and thank people because this has been a long time in evolution. Yeah. To me, this is very moving because we are working with families where they don't know whether they're, they're going to have a life, let alone be able to turn around and give, give the hand um, to come forward. And you all are, we all are, saying yes there you you can you can have a beautiful uh, rewarding and purposeful life don't don't buy what people have told you about an incurable brain disease and um, know that you're in um, great company so thank you all and um, look forward to seeing you next time yeah, thank you, everybody. Virtual hugs. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, hey. Take care. Bye bye. Thank and happy Hanukkah. You people here. <laughs> yes. Thank you all. Thank you. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye.